If there's nothing else, I have business elsewhere. God damn it, woman. Tell me about your past. Do you have coin for this information? You bitch. What do you think about Father Galfrey? I'll bribe you with eight gold. Lorena takes the bribe. Her eyes gleam as the gold tinkles into her hands. Fuck. Go on. Good enough. He sits in his finery counting coins. I expect he will do so until the day he dies. She considers you for a bit. I wouldn't trust him so much. He's in a guild of thieves just like us, after all. Hmm. I should still be fine giving her this. Rena takes the bribe, her eyes gleam as the gold tickles in her hands. Okay. Please be kind to me. Small note, if she trusts you, you don't pay. Well, you know what? You're right. I fucked up, alright? I thought maybe like it was like a double a double entendre question, being like, you know, do I do the obvious nice thing? Or because she's a, like a thieves guild person. And she just said, trust no one but gold. I'm like, alright, give me some fucking gold or whatever. Wow, fucking up. Whatever, video games. Got it. Alright. Roasted apple. Oh, well, that was worth it. Uh, tell me about your past. Go! I joined the guild after I murdered the captain of the Third Legion. Verona said that she was in the Third Legion. The Empire. Wait. Is there a way to check my clues? I want to see if that actually... Because I know it mentioned that before. But I don't know if I can check my actual clues. Because she just lied right there. Right? I'm pretty sure she lied. You can check at the end? Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, let's well, just the last bit here. Rena takes the bribe, her eyes gleam as the gold tingles into her hands. I, yeah. Thanks. I have family in the capital and do not talk to them. Alright, bye. You wonder how much Rowena has told you today is a lie. Uh, at least one. Alright. Next to the Mulberry Inn and find Father Garman at his usual table by the fireplace. He sits down across from him. He scratches some numbers on one of many rolls of paper, strewn across the table, and glances up at you. I hope the job of the Rowena was fruitful today. You are not dead with a knife in your back, so I presume yet. It would appear to be prudent, uh, it would be prudent to review what my silencers, oh wait, this is him saying, fuck. It would be prudent to review what my silencers have said when you have a quiet moment. Perhaps you will catch a lie in the process. Yes, there was one, actually. But I guess I can't do it right now. Talk about your goblins. Yeah, these guys are bitches. Goblins, from our guild. He scratches his chin and anoints. Their loyalty to the guild is tenuous at best. Here, take this. Ooh. So much folly begins and ends with crime. Thanks, man. A funny bunch, goblins. Uh, I guess we'll follow Borden tomorrow. Thank you, casual Q, by the way. Uh, Rose said you can't trust this guy either, though. Did he originally lie, or did she lie later? Well, she her. I guess I guess you make a point. I guess it makes sense. He might have initially lied about that bit of information. Who knows? Warden is going to pick up some lamps from shipwreck, uh, shipwreck port that have been, let's say, repossessed from the owners. Okay. You know at the meeting point on your map and retire for the night. I'm gonna go all the way around. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Thank you, Limelight. One, three, one. Eight. God 
Damn goblins. I've been ambushed. Fucking goblins. Stop. Stop being protected by all these fucking people! Jesus! Ah, uh, well. Why do you think Ro lied? Because she lied about when she joined the Thieves Guild. He said that she was ordered to do that. has the ring, I think. He's dead anyway, so it's okay. Oh wow, fuck. Frames, man, I frames. Full animation, frame. Try use your consumable. Nah, I'm good. I know I can heal and stuff doing that, but I think I'm alright for now. Keep up your energy of listening to your stream while installing sheetrock from Hurricane Harvey. Oh Jesus, dog. Fuck. Have fun over there, homie. Shit. Thanks, man. Right, let's see. You take back the uh, thieves' folly from the unconscious goblin. As soon as you do, with a splutter, the goblin's in question awakes and flips away from you, giggling and escapes into the forest. So goblins are colluding with the thieves' guild now. We've, we've had two encounters in the situation already. With the thugs defeated, you search their bodies for valuables. Anything good? Stun bomb. Okay. It has four charges. That ain't bad, but I could sell this for gold, which is perfect for this situation. So I'll take it. I prefer my weapons honest and unadorned. Yeah, that's fair. Good Ooh. luck taking this token from me. The road to Goblin Town. Crenshaw, do you guys have any tips on uh, on not depression spending, and also how to stop being depression? What? Probably just drink some Bud Light. I don't know, man. They say the road to Goblin Town is paved with gold and dead mice. Horus, son of the village idiot, has lured you to this forest cave with the promise of a hidden treasure. You regret everything. Just through here. He points into a dark cavern. I saw a goblin hurry into that hole not a moment ago. Goblin Town is in there. I'm sure of it. Oh, shit. What's this? <gasps> Is this one of those little maze trap things? Oh, fuck, I missed these. I actually forgot that... Oh, oh, God. I forgot that they had these in the game. I haven't seen them yet in Hand of Fate 2. I really like them in Hand of Fate 1. This is fucking sweet. the other ones I've done. I think there's a chest over here too. I 
think that's it? Yeah, okay. Alright. Let's do something down here. Well. Okay. Easy peasy. Man, it's a goblin town. So far, would you recommend buying this game for $29.99? Absolutely. 100%. They don't pay me to say that because they're not paying me at all. Horace is crestfallen when you tell him that the goblin town wasn't down there. You didn't fall the goblins either. Probably used their worldly magics. I'll tell you what, if you manage to get your hands on the goblin, it might lead you there. Nice. Not yet. Fire <gasps> the burning is a building. symbol of so much uh -oh. purity, will, creative force, and power. A moment of inattention, and it becomes pure destruction. So, the first time we did this, we uh, failed horribly and a family died. Let's see if we can accomplish it this time. You hear shouting up ahead. As you make your way down to the cobbled streets, you see lights flickering on the road in front of you. As you approach, you see a building, flames and smoke billowing out from its upper room windows. A crowd is formed outside, passing buckets of water between one another to temper the blaze. As you push your way through the crowd, you see a woman frantically pleading to the villagers. Please help! My family is in there! Anyone? Please help! Well... Here we see yet another wheel, each different, yet each bearing their own similarities. Okay. Let's see what you do with that, given your position. Through a haze of smoke, you find the woman's youngest daughter crying under a bed. You coax her out, scoop her up, and carry her out of the blaze. The villager rushes to your aid. Thank you, a brave adventurer! I can take it from here! But be warned, the building is not safe and will soon collapse. The woman embraces her child and turns to you once more. My husband! Did you, did you see my husband? He's still in there! Please! Please help! I'll do it. Got it! You find the woman's son attempting to find his way through the smoke and the flames. Grabbing his hand, you lead him back through the building to safety. So wait, she cared more about her husband than her son, and then I find her son randomly. Nice. The village rushes you in. Thank you, baby. Eventually, can take it from me. The woman embraces her child and turns to you once more. My husband! Did you see my husband? He's still in there, please! Please help! Okay. Ah, oh, fuck, now it's fast. Oh, that's really fast, and there's only one card on here that's good. Fuck. Fuck. That's okay. That's just the normal 10 damage, but I don't think I'm gonna win now, though. I hope. I hope it's okay. You might want to work on this. Clearly, you lack what it takes. That's just rude. With a sudden crack, the beam above you gives way, injuring you and blocking your path. You retrace your steps back out the building. Attending. The woman sees you emerge empty-handed, and the woman lets out a cry. My husband! Did you see my husband? <laughs> please, please help. All right. Fuck. Come on. <gasps> no. and flames scorching your skin as you leap from the room injured you make your way back to safety my husband okay lady this is my last chance I think after this I get knocked out fuck God. just straight failure
The smoke is too thick and you find yourself disoriented. Eyes burning, you fumble your way back out the building and catch your breath. The woman sees you emerge empty-handed, and the woman lets out a cry. My husband! Wait, I can go back again? Hell yeah, alright, we're gonna get him. It's so many cards, and only one of them is good. Holy shit. That's way off. That's a huge failure, too. Fuck, that's it. That's it. We're fucking done. We're fucking done, son. Shit. You hear a shrill cry as a beam in the next room collapses. The fire claims a victim. As you exit the building, it collapses behind you. While you're unable to save everyone, the villagers are grateful for your valiant effort. But my husband! Man, that's hard. Alright. You travel to Shipwreck Port by a wagon. Wow! Hello! Yeah, I'm catching a cry stream again. Hell yeah, dog! Shit, thank you very much for the interesting choice of bit. <laughs> thank you very much, man. Also, Exel's. Z, thank you very much as well. You travel the shipwreck port by wagon. You ride in relative silence until Borden turns to you and asks, quite seriously, What do you think of the boss? Um, you find it hard to read him. Borden trusts you a little less. At the port, you are approached by a pirate bearing a load of stolen lamps. Borden goes to give him a sack of gold, presumably payment. The unusually pale pirate shakes his head. Man. He pulls a rusty bucket and a sword. I want blood. This. Gordon looks at you expectantly, as if you shouldn't protest. Okay. Have some blood. Oof. Oof, that's a lot. Gordon trusts you a little more. You retrieve the crates of stolen lamps and pile them onto the wagons before them, setting them off. When you arrive at the drop-off point, Borden is seized by sudden emotion. I'm sorry I asked you to give blood. I'm a terrible person, aren't I? Um, you know, it's okay. I'll try to comfort him. I can, I can land this. I know I can. I believe in myself. This is easy. See? Easy. Borden trusts you a little more. Borden wrings his hands as if he very much like tell to leave. I should go. But hey, tell me about Father Galfrey. The boss always makes sure we get our cut. You can't ask for any better, really, in a girl or scoundrels like us. Uh, what about your favorite food? Oh, blackberry tart, or maybe apple tart. Borden begins to sweat, seemingly from the pressure of the question. Uh, ask about your family. I don't know if I should be telling you that sort of thing. Uh, well, how about some fucking money for the information? You can never say take some money. Give me the information. Give me your information. Ah, oh, Twig a Tweet, dog. I was told we need a Twig a Tweet, so here uh, she is. I love depression spending. And all of you, I need vodka. Vodka is always good, I guess. <laughs> also, uh, Celicins, by the way. Thank you as well. You have indeed wasted 14 months. Borden looks sadly to the ground. She left me for a traitor. You don't want to probe any further. Sam, what about your past? I'll give me some money for that. Here, dude. Uh, yeah. Got it. I was a farmer before. Gordon rings his hands. Watch your gun. Okay. Thanks, anti-social slacker. I wonder how much Borden has told you today is a lie. He seems pretty honest to me, except about the food part. He seemed pretty sketched out about that bit. So I only have 87 max health now. We watch the Mulberry Inn and find Father Garman just chilling out. Uh, for once, Father Galfrey is merely sitting and staring silently at his papers. The quill is stationary in his hand. Tomorrow evening I might die. For the briefest moment, fatigue crosses his face. Father Galfrey appears all at once very old. I hope you will know who the assassin is before then. Um, 
Well, uh, why do you trust me? Father Galfrey looks at you sadly. Even if you were to steal the ring from my hand, you could never truly be a part of this guild. No, you don't have the heart for it. Oh, okay. Uh, can I borrow some of your money? I cannot. I'd have to blow on the guild's records. Father Galfrey's jowls quiver in shock at the suggestion. Oh, well, can't say I didn't try. I guess I'll just go save you or something. You can camp, remember? Well, yeah, I know about camping. Why would I want to camp, though? I have 87 max health. I can't heal that. That's the max health right now. That's how that works. I told Brendan to stake out the castle by more hammer, like, for a moment, out of him. The lady of the castle owes us some considerable debt. You know what the meaning point of your map and retire for the night. You can look at clues in camp. Oh, someone said I could do it at the inn. Interesting. Good. Let's try that. Take this chance to review the clues you have learned so far. Ah, oh, that's helpful. Okay. So, what did Galfrey? Galfrey said that Borden has worked for him for a long time, and that he'll spill more truth when drunk. Galfrey said that Rowena has worked for him for a long time. Uh, Galfrey said that Rowena was in the Third Legion of the Empire Army. Galfrey said that Rowena will always tell the truth for money. Galfrey said that Grindon has worked for him for a long time. Galfrey said that Grindon makes wild accusations when drunk. Galfrey said that the assassin will always lie regardless of their personality. Interesting. What about Rowena? Rowena said that she was in the Third Legion Empire and killed her captain. Borden? Borden said that his wife left him for a traitor. Paul Bjorn sighs deeply and looks sadly in the distance. He's very upset about this. Okay, are there any things I really want here? A hunched, elderly traitor blinks up at you. Leaves the old eye. He shakes his head. You would go to the yeah, I'm sorry. It's just, I need it. Stuff. Oh, hell yeah, I need this. Absolutely. Always buy this ring. It's the best fucking thing on the planet. No other uh, other weapons or equipment are needed. Rowena did not lie. Yeah, it looked like she did, in fact, tell the truth. wonder why. Why would she tell the truth? A rotten priest and a rotten oh. thief. Expend the effort to save him, and watch thousands wail as they lose their hard-earned wealth. What? Well, I didn't mean to come here yet. I'm sorry. Bye. Photographer. Of course. You, can I just come later? Come back soon. He calls and leaves to pursue the quest. Will you be? Ex okay, he will be accessible later. Okay, cool. With a shout, Grinton signals your arrival at the castle by Moorhammer Lake. You find some long grass and settle down for the day. Despite being a stakeout, Grindon happily takes, uh, talks quite loudly. You know, my sources tell me the lady inside is wanted for high treason. He suddenly pulls out a bit of charcoal and paper. Would you like my autograph? Sure. You allow him to scribble his name on the roll of paper. He tucks it lovingly into your hand. Grindon trusts you a little more. Time passes, but nobody leaves or enters the modest castle. I say, who are you anyway? Grindon retrieves a boiled sweet from a paper bag and pops it into his mouth. I've not seen you around before. Um, I'm a new recruit. Oh, really? I heard we didn't need any more recruits. That was struggling to feed the mouths we already have. Grindon squints at you, suspiciously stroking his hat. Tell me. What'd you do to get recruited? Um. Uh. Oh wow, I could flatter the fuck out of this guy. Or I could say a solicitor to my father Galthry while he was sleeping. Because he mentioned I am stealing the ring from his hand, and I would never be in it. But I feel like if I do this, I might appease him more because he's like. He just gave me his autograph for fuck's sakes, you know? The gaudy thief blushes. He trusts you a little more. Hell yeah. 
You and Ninja Tortoise as well as Sandy Catboy. Thanks, guys. Little else happens during the stakeout. You spend most of the time watching a dog to sleep. Before you head your separate ways, you take the chance to question Grindel. Huh. What do you think of Father Galfrey? Father Galfrey? A daughter and old foe. I'm surprised he hasn't already been replaced by a younger, more dashing guild member. He's gone soft in his old age. The other day, he let one of the rabble go free after they mocked up a job. No thumbs chopped off, nothing. Huh, what's your favorite food? Ah, great question. It will be a sugar sponge swan, no doubt. What about your family? And his family when I have so many devoted followers on Twitter. What about your past? Well, I used to be a famed actor. That was a long while ago. Hmm. Interesting. Good day, sir. You wonder how much Grindon has told you today is a lie. Well, good job. Uh, I'll come back later. Bye. Oh, thanks for the gold, guys. Not the and burning here building is again! Your reward, at least in potential. Fuck! <laughs> oh no! The These buildings keep catching on fire! Shit! <sighs> Let Kobjorn attempt the escape. A rescue. Without a word, Kolbjorn draws one of his mighty swords and enters the blazing this. building. You can do it, Kolbjorn! You can do it! I believe in you! Oh, man. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no! Forgot. He's stupid. Suddenly, when all oh, seems dear. lost, the silhouette of Kolbjorn appears the in next front time. and collapses. You lose Kolbjorn for five turns. You think you can make out some shapes coming from the smoke? Did Kolbjorn manage to save them all? <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Well, I got one. I thought it was going to go a lot... I don't know, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. A lone girl follows shortly after, collapsing onto Kolbjorn, gasping for air. The villagers rush in and aid the family. While Kolbjorn was able to save everyone, the villagers are grateful for his valiant effort. Well, good job, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I can't Ooh, determine yeah. whether you're the sort of person to put their faith in goblins, or merely the sort to give their actions no thought. The tower is in chaos. Alarm bells have the garrison soldiers in a panic as you watch a goblin with a hefty sack leaps from a window, dangling from a makeshift rope. He bounces painfully off of the wall as he lowers himself to the ground. The castle doors fly open, guards assemble, and armed and angry. The goblin blows his horn, discharging a little more than a feeble hiss. I need a moment to recharge this. Help me and I'll split my takings. Before you can reply, he throws you an item from his sack. Here's your retainer, he says. Ooh. The guards rush forward. Arrest them! That was the goblin! Yeah. Yeah, I am. He paid me, so now I am. It'll be, uh... It'll be an, an adventure. It's fine. They need this one with the of goblin town? The expansion of Empire requires constant conscription of new blood. I just realized that man's a fairy man. Soldiers block all attacks, greatly reducing their damage. Use Bash to open them up for damage. Oh, that's a lot of dudes. 